Hey there, hope you're having a wonderful day. In this video, we're going to go over another problem to improve your understanding of runtime complexity. So for this video, the problem will be called toSum. And basically, what you need to do is write a function where given a sorted list of integers and a target integer number, if there are two distinct numbers in the sorted list that can add up to the target, your function should return true otherwise false. So we have some examples here. And you see we have this sorted list of integers and the target is nine. And your function should return true for these two inputs because two plus seven is equal to the target nine. And over here we have another example and the target is 26. So this function should return true as well because 11 plus 15 is equal to 26 and seven plus 19 is also equal to 26. And for this third example, the target is 12, and your function should return false because there are no two number in this list where if you add them up, there are no two numbers that will equal to 12. So yeah, just take a moment and write out your solution and we'll come back and analyze that solution. All right, so we have our solution here and you probably wrote something similar. So let's analyze the runtime of the solution. And actually, before we do so, let's run a program. So these are our test function calls. And basically, they're the same as the examples given up here. So we should expect true, true, false for the outputs. And as you can see, we have true, true, false. So our solution works. So what is the runtime of the solution? Well, we have a for loop here that goes through the numbers from zero to n, where n is the length of the list. And then we have another for loop here. So you might be thinking that we have two nested for loops and therefore it is n squared. And you would be partially correct. So the runtime is O of n squared, but it is not because we have two nested for loops. So the reason is well, let's see what we're doing here. So basically, we're going through each number and we are checking for the combinations we can make for that specific number. And if the combination is equal to the target, we return true, otherwise we return false. All right, so let's walk through our function. So how many numbers do we have? We have six numbers, so the length is six, so n will be six. So in the first iteration, we start with two, and we do 2 and 7, 2 and 11, 2 15, 2 20, and 2 21. So in total, for the first iteration, we make five combinations. And then the next iteration, we have 7. So we have 7 11, 7 15, 7 20, 7 21. And we have four combinations. Next, we have 11, and that is 11 15, 11 20, 11 21. So that is three combinations. And then with 15, we have two combinations. And with 20, we have one combination. So you can see each iteration is different. We have different number of combinations, but they're going in descending order. And the sum of this is equal to 15. And this is the total number of operations if our input size was six. Now, if n were 10, we would have nine combinations plus eight plus seven, plus six, plus five, all the way to plus one. And the total of this would be 45. So this is actually a summation of all the numbers from one to n minus one. And there's actually a formula for this. This summation is equal to n times n minus one divided by two. And I'm not gonna prove this formula in this video, but you can look it up. I might make a video on how to prove this formula, but basically that is the total sum of all the numbers from one to n minus one. And this is equal to n squared over two minus n over two. And as you can see, the bigger power is n squared, therefore this is O of n squared, okay? So this is the reason why our solution was O of n squared. So O of n squared would be the runtime for our brute force solution. 
And the reason why it's called brute force is because we are literally checking for every possible combination that can add up to the target number. Now, doing that is actually not necessary. So if you read the problem, you might have noticed that I mentioned the word sorted. The fact that the list is sorted means we don't actually have to check every single combination. So let's say, for instance, the target number was 12. And I do 2 and 7, that is 9, and 2 and 11, that is 13. So at this point, I can just stop the iteration there. Why? Because the list is sorted, and 2 plus 11 is already bigger than 12. So there is no need to check any number past this point, because we know that every number past this point is going to be bigger than 11. So we are doing a lot of unnecessary work by checking these combinations. So instead of doing the brute force method, where we check every single combination, we can use a two-pointer strategy. We know the list is sorted. So I'm going to create two variables, left and right, and I'm going to assign them to the indices of both ends of the list. And so for the first iteration, we are going to check, is left plus right equal to the target? If so, we can return true. Otherwise, we make a comparison. So 2 plus 21 is equal to 23. So obviously, this number is too big. So what should we do? Well, if this number is too big, that means we should have the right side move downwards one. And then 2 plus 20, this is 22. And this is also too big. So right will go down one again. And this is 2 plus 15. So this is also too big. 2 plus 11. This is also too big because this is 13. And then we get to 2 plus 7. And this is equal to 9. And this is too small. So what do we do? We move left up one. And at this point, we can see that left and right, these two pointers are crossing path. That means at this point, if we do not find two numbers that equal to the target, there are no two numbers that will equal to the target. So I'm going to create two variables to keep track of the left side and the right side. So left is equal to zero, and right is equal to length of numbers minus one. And then here, I'm going to create a while loop. So while left is less than right, this means that they haven't crossed path yet. Cur sum is equal to numbers left plus numbers right. So if cur sum is equal to target, we return true. Elif cur sum is less than the target. That means we need to tell the left pointer to move up one. Elif, cur sum is greater than the target, so the sum is too big. Then we need to make it smaller, so we tell the right side to go down one. And since we are moving the left up or the right down, eventually they will cross path. So if that happens, we exit the while loop and we return false. All right, so let's run our program. And as you can see, we have true, true, false. So this is a much more efficient solution because we only iterate through the list once. And this strategy works because the list of the numbers is sorted, okay? So the runtime of our function here will be O of n, whereas the runtime over here will be O of n squared. All right, so that's how you solve this problem using two different solutions with two different runtimes. So uh, yeah, that's it for this video. And if you found this video helpful, make sure you subscribe to the channel for more data structures and algorithms tutorials. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.